Okay. I shall save my panic till later then. <laughs> That'll be the day. <laughs>
more canals than Venice, beautiful historic architecture, and a city that's home to the NIA, the National Indoor Arena. Welcome to the city of Birmingham in the West Midlands, located in the very heart of England. This venue has played host to the All England Championship since 1994, and this year marks the 104th staging of the All England, the oldest and most prestigious tournament in the world of badminton. And today is a quarterfinals day at the Yonex All England Badminton Championships, event number three on the 12 tournament MetLife BWF World Super Series. Not only the third event of the year, but also one of the five premier events, an even higher tier of tournament within the Super Series. Well, as I say, it is quarter-finals day, and we're starting with men's doubles, and Fernaldi and Hiro of Indonesia, Indonesia, who yesterday beat the former champions, Bo and Mogensen from Denmark. They're up against the Malaysians, Hoon Tian Hao and Tan Hu Kiong. Then mixed doubles, and the Olympic champions are winners here four years ago, Zhang Nang and Xiao Yunlei. They're up against the last home players remaining in the tournament, Mr and Mrs Adcock. Then women's singles and Sina Nawal, the Olympic bronze medalist, appearing in her fifth consecutive quarter-final here. She's up against the 2011 winner, Wang Shexian. Then mixed doubles and Ko and him, who were beaten finalists in Germany last week, they're up against Koling and Aruta Yul of Denmark. Then the last of our quarter-finals, Sun Wan Ho is up against the beaten finalists from 2010. The number five seed, Kanichi Targo. So that's the full lineup for the quarterfinals. And uh, let's get right underway with the first of our matches. It is men's doubles. Uh, Gideon Marcus Finaldi and Marcus Kido up against Hoon Tian Hao and Tan Wee Kiong of Malaysia. So let's go courtside and join our MC for the day, Howard Bentham. And please welcome our athletes for the men's doubles quarter-final from Indonesia, Gideon Marcus Finaldi and Marcus Kido. And the number five seeds from Malaysia, Hoon Tian Hao and Tan Wee Kiong. the Malaysian pair coming through to this uh, quarter-final as expected uh, but uh, their opponents what a big surprise when they beat the number three seeds Matthias Bo and Karsten Mogensen in the second round yesterday as you can see three Indonesian pairs six different nations at quarter-final stage and that's a very healthy situation as far as Will Badminton is concerned so here the Indonesians, they play the world circuit as independent players. Red or blue? Red. Red's cold. Marcus Kido, of course, hugely experienced, former world and Olympic Thank champion. You, okay. Taking on his younger partner, Gideon Marcus Finaldi. There's Finaldi. He's going to turn 23 on Sunday. A real youngster, but he's already enjoyed success with uh, Marcus Kido. Only formed their partnership at the China Masters last September, six months ago, and they've already won a Super Series title. Came through in Paris to take the French Super Series as qualifiers. Well, as you can see, their record from last year, well, a pretty good. This year, one quarter-final, that was the Malaysian Super Series, where Marcus Guido got injured. He then had to withdraw from the Indian Grand Prix gold. So it is very nice to see Marcus Guido, the 29-year-old from Jakarta, back on court. And what a tournament they've had so far. There you can see Bo and Mulgensen their victims in the second round yesterday. The 2011 champions here at the All England and of course the Danes also silver medalists at the London Olympic Games and silver medalists last year at the World Championships. To beat them in two straight games, 18 and 12, in just 32 minutes, 
that was very impressive indeed. So to their opponents, Kim Tian Hao and Tan Wei Kiong. Number five seeds gone up one place in the world, ranking back up to their highest ever, a career high of seven. They spent 14 weeks as world number sevens this time last year and just got back up to that status. So two finals for them last year, winning their first title, the Macau Grand Prix, and also reached the final of the China Super Series event. This year, they've had a semi-final last week at the German Grand Prix Gold, as though they were the number two seed, so that a disappointment for them. Well, as far as their path through to this quarterfinal, my goodness, they've had to battle three games in both matches. And yesterday against Hirokatsu, Hashimoto and Riasu Hirata, having lost the first game, they were then 8-16 down in the second and 26-2016. So they were a really tough match. An hour and ten minutes as you can see. So did very, very well to come through that. So Alan Potter is our umpire and Paul Buffin, our service judge, both of the court officials from England. So Marcus Kido, the former world and Olympic champion with Gideon Marcus Fernaldi. The youngster, 22 years of age, with this man who's so, so experienced, 29-year-old Marcus Kido. Won, of course, the Olympic Games in 2008 and the World Championships in 2007 with Hindra Sadiawan. And now competing as an independent player. But we know that their world ranking gone up one place to 18 in the world. They've only got eight tournaments towards that world ranking, so not really a realistic indication of their capabilities. As far as the Malaysians are concerned, the number five seeds, Hun Tian Hao and Tan Wee Kiong, well, they've had a steady start last week. Ladies and, a and gentlemen, to this tournament on my here right, in Birmingham. Hun Tian Hao and Tan Wee Kiong, Malaysia. And on my left, Gideon Marcus Fernaldi and Marcus Kido, Indonesia. There's some Indonesian fans in. Tanwi Kyong to serve. Gideon Marcus Fernaldi, love all, play. So the first of the quarterfinals gets underway. Well, that's just about so a perfect seven. start for the youngster, isn't it? One it's love. a perfect start. You can't do better than that. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing when I saw it. There's me thinking he's going to be the nervous one on court. But every love. time I see this new Indonesian pair play, Borton, I really get more and more excited by them. The fact that Fernaldi oh. well, is a very explosive player. In fact, he won the men's singles at the One, 2009 two. Victoria Futures inter International event. So we know he's a good athlete, but he's really embracing this partnership with Kido. I, I agree with you, and I think that Kido is, is really uh, injecting a lot of energy into this, uh, into this combination. Uh, his experience, uh, his way about on the court, and obviously that's uh, a very um, good partner to have for such a young, young player. So I, I totally understand how the pair is improving as they are. Two, three. Well, struck above the waist, that service fault. Over seven, Numerous serving four, rules two. in badminton. Shuffle must be struck below the waist. Racket must be facing in a downward direction. Got to hit the cork first. Not allowed to move your feet. Not and allowed to double <laughs> action. That's why we've got a dedicated service oh. judge. I'm a little bit concerned, Morton. Over seven, three, four. Just struggling to see from where we're sitting, but Tanui Kiong looks to have 
some strapping on the back of his neck or shoulder or something. Mm. Yeah, I, I've seen the patch, yes. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. No, that was yeah, good. There you can just see it, yeah. at the back of his neck. For all. Now, you're being our little spy in the camp <laughs> and going round and talking to all the coaches and players. Have they I missed been? that one. You've I missed, missed that. It. I do apologise for it. I got lots of other good stuff, but not that one. Oh. Oh. Seven, five, four. It's been a little bit of a nervous start from uh, both pairs. Uh, a few easy mistakes, but I'm sure they will soon settle in. No. Right on cue. Good rally. Good interception. Service over. In there Five all. By Hun. Yeah, former world junior champion back in 2004, playing with Tan Boon oh. Xiong. Yeah, hugely talented individual. Question marks about his physical fitness. Yeah, it's been a question mark for years in the Malaysian camp as well. But, uh, He's seven, producing the results six, and, and really five. playing good badminton. Yeah, but just imagine if he was perhaps a little bit quicker around the court because his racket skills, his reading of the game is not in question at all. I think that's Seven, some of five. the secret behind the uh, Indonesian combination is that uh, Kido is having a, a younger and very agile uh, partner who jumps around and do all the hard work from the back and Kido intercepting and, and is, is so good at the front of the court. Seven, and I think that's a, six, a very good and seven. very wise combination. Is there to Gideon Marcus Finaldi. Just wide. I think this is how we Seven actually are going to see most of the match. I think the, uh, the Malaysian pair is very willing to, to defend and go in on the uh, counter-attacking opportunities. And we will see uh, a young uh, finale really having to work hard from the back. Eight, seven. And the luck of the net court. I can't, can't really blame that. I actually didn't know he was a, a former singles player, but now when you're saying it, I, I really I can see it. You can see it. Yeah, definitely. 247. It's not too shabby, is it? Of course, Marcus Kiddo has uh, had his injury seven, problems seven. not only in Malaysia Nine, in eight. January. He's had some long-term problems as well. His knee, it's quite clear from the strapping underneath his kneecap on his left knee. That's been a problem. That's bad luck. It's really well placed by Finaldi. Ten, eight. Good call, line judge. 
Service over, 9, 10. Mm, there's the lack of mobility. Yeah. Ten, all. That's an excellent serve. Great oh. smash from Hoon Tian Hao. Good power. Yep. And it's the number five seeds from Malaysia who have the advantage, albeit just one point at the mid-game interval. Yeah, pleased with that. In fact, when you were coaching in Malaysia, you were... He was one of my players, yes. Yeah. He was... Uh, in the third and fourth, possibly fifth men's doubles combination. He's a good player, very crafty, very good, uh, smart brains, play good badminton. Yeah, which translates probably into an excellent coach. He's a good coach, and he's very well liked uh, by, his, um, by his players, I think, giving uh, a good atmosphere, working hard. Yeah, a little smile towards them, still giving instruction. That's permissible, that's all within the rules. As long as play is not started. Yeah. 11-10. Play. Ladies and gentlemen, out of courtesy for the athletes, please, no flash photography in the arena. Turn the flash off on your cameras and phones. Thank you. Good. Well, the Malaysians don't like the call. I wonder if there's going to be a challenge here. Challenge. Oh, Sideline. go. In. <laughs> Once again. Yes. I can't, I can't stop laughing. I you know, you love, love it. it. You I love it. do love it. <laughs> it's a new exciting uh, venture in, in, in Babington. Oh, we can't see from there. Yeah, it's the sideline in question. Yes. But, of course, uh, we've got the review system, the instant review system, which has cameras on every line. Oh, I thought In. that clipped the line. I'm with you In. on that, Morton. Let's see what the tournament referee says. In. In. Challenge unsuccessful. We can do this. <laughs> <laughs> One challenge remaining. Yeah. Well, you could clearly hear the umpire saying one challenge remaining because each pair or player in the only 11 gets all. two challenges per match, two unsuccessful challenges. Unsuccessful, yes. So if you're successful, if you're proved right, then you keep your challenges. Very similar to tennis. That's excellent defence by the Indonesians there. And then missing the kind of easy one. Nothing is easy, but uh, it was easier seven, than seven, the others. 12, 11. That one there, excellent. Yeah. And now he's in total control and position and then missing that one. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on to court number two in the men's doubles quarterfinal, the number six seed from Indonesia. Oh, that was a magnificent net shot from Fernando. Quick, 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 quick follow up. Look at that, how he follows up. Good defence by Hoon. Service over. 13, 12. When you consider how how big a, a player Hoon is, so probably a block shot there would have been uh, the clever one to play rather than the push. Yeah. 
well, move him move for, him. Yeah. forward, yeah. Yeah, like that drop shot. It's the sky's drop shot. Yeah. yeah. He's very strong when he's just standing, but you know, as soon as he's got to move, he will face some trouble. And I don't know, I, I sit always when I watch Kido playing, you know, I'm always waiting when they, when he or they start taking this run of points. I don't know if you noticed that so often you see that it's 15, 14, 15 or something like that, suddenly, they take four points, just like that. And you see it's off. And I sit here having this feeling when he's going to do it again. Yeah. Service over, 14.30. We alluded to it a little bit yesterday, didn't we, during the singles, the, the capability of a player suddenly to put on the pressure. We mm. were watching Momoto, the yeah. former World Junior men's singles player. Against Yusuf. Yeah. yeah. And that ability to sense when to put the pressure on and when to really up the game. Yep. Oh, that's well played. Play the big points. Yeah. Service over. 14 all. Getting quicker. 15, 14. 56 miles per hour if you're that way inclined rather than kilometers an hour. Sixteen fourteen. So that's three in a row now. From 13 14 to 16 14. And it's Kido serving. Oh, that's a good return. Very good return. <laughs> but you know, had it not come over, it was so yeah, tight. Over. Yeah, 15, it would have been the fourth. 16. of the mark. Service over. Yeah, he hasn't 17, really found the rhythm 15. of him on his serve since he was faulted. Still looks quite high to me. Service for ball. Oh. Well, there we go. Well, the service judge service is over. giving a clear 16, indication 17. that it is above the waist. Mm. No, I wasn't so convinced by that one. Now let's just clarify something. The waist, I s yeah. could see it's that it's under the arms these days. Uh, <laughs> well, officially, it's the lowest rib. <laughs> Service over. Eighteen sixteen. Lovely little half court shot. Yeah. No! Tricky, tricky. yeah, here we go. Here's yeah. your little run of points again, yeah. Morton. Yeah. He does it so yeah. There's a reason why he's won as much as he has and Olympic champion and all that, so. Oh! Mm, that's a good return, play. Yeah. Service over. But I don't 17, think it's enough. I know it's, it's very close, 1917s, but somehow in this men's doubles, it's hard to get run the points. Ready to play, please. Oh, fast and furious. Well, it was a nice idea. Long execution. 20, 20 17. Oh, Finaldi is so quick, I suspect. He would he, get it. He would have got it yeah. anyway. Game point opportunities. Practicing his serve. Making sure he's not getting faulted again. And that 
cross-court shot was really good as well by Kido. Mm, the disappointments. Service over. 18-20. Look at his reaction. Mm. He knows. He knows. From Tamri Kion. Yeah. First game. The opening game Gideon to Marcus the unseeded combination of Marcus Guido and Gideon Marcus Fernaldi. Just 17 minutes needed, and the unseeded pair are one game up. Well, I should think the Indonesian coach will be pretty happy. Yeah,要不要准备去一些就去踢脚的。如果你下土顶的话，你的意识没有讲过，你要去发挥脚的话，就请土顶，你要准备自尊。如果你遇到压力正好的发现他的话，你就变成你自己的球，不妨发挥你
a short serve, a low serve. And Dan, <laughs> you can go in and attack that one. Mm. Oh, good defence from Marcus Guido. Just explain to us, Morton, technically, seven, why seven, it's more four, of a problem three. to keep the shuttle below the waist when you're flick serving. It's because you, you have to... It's a, it's a higher action somehow when you have to flick it higher over the opponent, and you just... <laughs> by natural way of striking the shot, it will Five, go higher, so three. you have to start from a very very low position to do it. Yeah. Because we see it time and time again with the, they, they with the flick forwarded, serve. Yeah, yeah, they the get flick forwarded serve. so much. But the pressure's on the Malaysians now, and obviously when he knows it, then he's got to serve so well low for the rest Short. of the match. Yeah. Six, three. Meets for the short one, and then that's when Marcus Guido leaps into action. Malaysians have to change tactics here in, in, in my book. The normal style of what they're doing, they haven't got any success. They have to go on the attack and really try to uh, play some attacking badminton, see if they can add on some pressure. Yeah, I just sense that the Indonesians have been given free reign at the moment and they're making the most of it they want yeah. to attack well placed yeah really well placed that shot when we really started playing regularly together the malaysians back in april 2012 <laughs> a lot of combinations has been uh, tested and a lot of pressure now that uh, Kukian Kiat has resigned from the National Federation he has Eight just uh, a week ago or something yeah. like that it was announced uh, in the papers in the press conference that he was uh, retiring so uh, obviously even more pressure on the uh, Bums and Association of Malaysia to find uh, good substitutes Lift. Yeah, still good disguise from Marcus Kido. Nine three. But this is what I just don't understand, Morton. I see it time and time again with the Malaysians. This contentment to defend. I know they've got mm. good defences, but you can't win at this elite level of badminton in doubles by just defending. No. Um, I, I agree with you. They, they have to have more in the toolbox than just the defence uh, if they want to go all up there and put pressure on the really big pace. But look at that high lift again. Another yeah. lift. And again. This I just don't understand. No. They won this one. But surely they're not, I mean, you so can't seven, rely on four, your nine. opponents making errors for you to win a match. No. You've got to go in there and grab it yourself. Yeah. Good 
turn. Right. And soon that angle is coming. Oh, no, he didn't. But he still placed it well. Body smash on the forehand side. Service over, 10, 4. I, I thought he was so tempted to try to go for an angle smash there. 258. About 161 miles an hour. Always run off to get a new racket. Goodness me. <laughs> it's been defending and now they've got to win it. Yeah, that's a good shot. <laughs> what a rally. Yeah, just determined to work their opponents. And here he comes. Yeah. <laughs> well worked from Marcus Kido <laughs> and Gideon Marcus Vinaldi. 11 4. The advantage, seven point advantage. Goodness me. Hoon Tian Hao dashing off court, grabbing a new racket, coming back on. Yeah, excellent rally. Lots of things. Good to watch. At one stage, the Indonesian players simply gave up attacking and just waiting and drop shot after drop shot, and then eventually, okay, let's go for the attack again. Four points, 20 seconds. 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 So they're have more experience. And there goes the broken racket into the racket bag. There's a whole army of racket stringers. About 500 rackets a week they do in these tournaments. I believe that, and I wouldn't like to do it, I must admit. Oh, That's tedious work. Yeah, and they do a marvellous job, I have to say. Yeah, I know a few of them, and they're wonderful guys standing there day in and day four. out, hours after hours. Play. Well, I think there may be a few signs that the Indonesians have dropped their pace, don't seem to have so much penetration on their smashes as they did in the opening game, but I can't believe that they're just going to be worn down. I really convinced that the Malaysians have to start trying to get on the attack themselves. It's just defence and working the Indonesians. I can't see that working. No! I'm sure they will last the Indonesian pair. Service over. Um, Five, should this has, had worked, I think, you know, it should have been from the very first go of the match, love or first set, and uh, really try to tire them out. But oh, I think it's what? a little bit too late. Quick was that back to the flick serve. Service over. Gideon well, Marcus Finaldi. And to play a winning smash like that, that is extraordinary. Yeah, good shot. Oh. Oh, nice placement from Tamri Kiong. Service over. Six, uh, Marcus Kido knows it. It was his. Yeah, he's uh, too committed to his forehand. Uh, Rapid down his knees and uh, not really ready. Brilliant smashing. Yeah. 
Absolutely phenomenal. You know, Morden, it's quite extraordinary. And when we travel the world and we follow the World Badminton Tour, we see younger players coming through, tried out the new partners and so on. But as far as Finaldi is concerned, to me, he's appeared from nowhere. I hadn't seen him at the Grand Prix Gold events or at the Super Series events, and here he is six months after he joined the Super Series, he's challenging for titles. Yeah. One one. Yeah, well, it's, it's really good, but I, I think it shows the strength of Indonesian badminton. They have so many to choose from, and, and not everyone makes it into uh, PBSI, the uh, National Association, and their training. And some have to fend for themselves outside, and I'm sure he's one of them, and being picked up by Marcus Kido, Kido and, and, you know, say, you know, you can do it, play with me, and we can do it together. doesn't quite look comfortable at the net no. he's no. such a good worker from the back of the court but room for improvement at the front yes he had an opportunity there and this is the next one but his his racket is not often ready he's, he's got to lift it before he's hitting the shot and that's uh, hasn't got time for that wants to come through this and really have to good win. pressure. Yeah. Very good pressure by Tan there. I like that, you 10, know. 14. Driving the shot and then following up and really making a, an effort there. Great. This time on the low serve. 15, Coach Pung doesn't like the call. Yeah, you see, he does lift Ten. that left arm, doesn't he? Ten. Just before he's he's going to hit it. Look how that left arm goes up. It's in that's, chest high. Yeah, that's the problem. And I agree with the service judge. Hmm. Me too. Play by Tan. Good interception. So it'll be interesting to see if the Malaysian pair can close the gap a bit because it's now or never. Yeah. That is quick, isn't it? Service over. 16 11. Can't fault him for enthusiasm, can you? No. Great energy. Oh, that's clever. Very, very clever. The change of pace, the disguise drop shot. 17 11. Driven. Then look at that, that's beautiful angle. Look where the shuttle landed. Way in front short, of that. Short, short. Well, it's his first ever All England Championships, Finaldi. 
and he and Kido are just three points away from a place in the semi-final. interesting here normally the the player from the back would go forward and hit that one but Kilo just shot it I think get away this is mine I'll finish it oh he's got that back would you believe it how on earth did he retrieve that just about to say, 20, match point, perfect to tack onto the body, mm. but somehow he got it back, and the Indonesians have match point opportunities. Game. And let's not finish on a fourth serve. Correction. Well, the umpire, I think, has got it Service wrong. Over. 12, 20. It was wide of the centre line. It was. And he hadn't heard that call. He just saw that it was... You know, as far as the front service line is concerned. No, oh, no, it has indeed ended. Well, on a service error, not a service fault. Mm. And the unseeded pair of Gideon, Marcus Fernaldi and Marcus Kido have booked a place in tomorrow's semi-final. Match won by Gideon Marcus Fernaldi and Marcus Kido. For Gideon Marcus Fernaldi, his first ever All England Championships. What a way for the youngster to enjoy his first time in Birmingham. Their confirmation of the score 21 18, 21 12 in 38 minutes of play. Well, goodness me, what an exciting, dynamic pair they are. Uh, Fernaldi and Kido, experience and youth makes for terrific badminton. So they have already booked their place in the semi-final. Who will they play? The world champions, Mohamed Hassan and Hendra Setiawan, who, of course, is the former partner of Marcus Guido, the man that he won both the Olympic Games and World Championships with. Wouldn't that be a delicious lineup for semi-finals? But, of course, there is business to be done as far as the world champions are concerned. Chinese opposition there. So to our next quarter-final, and it's mixed doubles. It's the reigning Olympic champions, Zhang Nang and Xiao Yunlei, 
former champions here, of course, up against the number five seeds, Chris and Gabby Adcock. And let's hear it for the athletes. On to court number one from China, the number one seeds, Zhangnan Zhao Yunlei. Against the number five seeds from England, Chris Adcock and Gabrielle Adcock. Well, this quarterfinal is from the uh, top half of uh, the draw. And there you can see a very healthy situation at quarterfinal stage because there's seven different nations involved. Two Chinese pairs. And, of course, for England's Chris and Gabby Adcock, the number five seeds, they are the last remaining English pair or players in the whole of the tournament. So, I mean, you can safely say that the home fans will be right behind them. So, the introductions, first of all. The Chinese combination, not only the number one seeds, but the reigning Olympic champions, Zhang Yang and Zhao Yun Lei. And this is a fairly interesting matchup because the Olympic champions, they can see last year, and that win loss record translates into nine finals, six titles from their 13 tournaments. I think there's a very good reason why they're world number ones this year. They've already won the first Super Series of the year. That was the Korean Super Series. Lost in the semi-final of the Malaysian Super Series. Losing out to the Danes, Fisher Nielsen and Pedersen, who lost yesterday. Surprising loss for them to teammates Koling and Aruta Yul. But as far as the Olympic champions and former world champions are concerned, well, they won this title in 2010 as qualifiers and uh, their match yesterday against the bronze medalists from last year's World Championships, Shinbek Chol and Um Hae Won. Eight and seven in 32 minutes against fellow bronze medalists from the World Championships last year. Well, that says to me that they're in great form. They certainly look very fired up indeed. So to Chris and Gabby Adcock, well, they're the number five seeds, number five in the world. Their highest ever world ranking. They reached this status in November last year. Fifth appearance at the All England Championships as a pair and the first ever time as a pair they've been in the quarter final. Of course, Chris Adcock, 24, he'll turn 25 next month. His wife, 23. And as far as their path is concerned, well, they have a little bit of trouble uh, against the Indonesians in the first round, but against Kaspar and Patrick of Germany yesterday, they really did look very impressive indeed. So the English...